April is the Stress Awareness Month, and it's something that's been in place, in fact, since 1992. But I think we can all agree that we are probably now at the most stressed that we've ever been in as a society with all the different things happening at the moment in our lives and in our work. Um, so with the pandemic, in fact, it has increased significantly. Already three quarters of employees globally are under severe stress, believe it or not. Some of them may recognize it, some of it may not. But nonetheless, that is the realistic figure that we're working with. And on top of that, with kind of going into this remote work and all the unforeseen circumstances that have come our way in, in the recent year, year and a half, it has significantly increased. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, Ivan. I know you have some statistics around this if you want to share with us. Elena, let me let me tell you already that uh, there is almost nothing to celebrate. The situation has uh, worsened. That's something that is uh, that is clear. We are close to 72% level of, of, of stress. Prior to uh, COVID, we were about 45, 42%. Um, and on top, a lot of people do not have this possibility, in fact, to interact, to communicate with, with their managers, with, with the management of the company in order to open up about how much is the feeling of stress. It's like having a shame talking about, uh, about that. So there is very little to, to celebrate. What I wanted to, uh, to provide is a um, um, couple of tips that I have personally been using in the workplace in order to live better. So if your corporation by any chance is not doing enough to manage stress, uh, it is good to have like kind of a guideline or, or tips to, in order to, to, to work on that yourself. So one of the things that, uh, that, we, that is quite important is to, uh, to have like um, a reminder to set a couple of boundaries. We cannot manage two long hours of, uh, of work, but it's not, more, it's not so much about the quantity of hours that you are present at work. It's more about the impossibility that, that you have to recharge your brain. So is the intensity. When uh, a brain is continuously in demand, well, there is no way that you can be productive. In fact, there is clear research that shows that you cannot be productive if you are working for 11 hours uh, in, in, a day, in a day in a continuous uh, stressful uh, environment. So you need to set a couple of boundaries about when do I, uh, when do I leave the work? When do I take mini breaks uh, in order to be able to, uh, to recharge? Uh, it is quite important to set these boundaries. The second tip that I, I, I um, it is it's quite important, especially since uh, since COVID. So we are working live remotely, and we need to have designated no meeting days. What does it mean? Is that your brain cannot handle all of the extra pressure when you are communicating online. In fact, you are using almost a double in terms of energy when you are focusing in. How do you look in Zoom? How do, you, do the others perceive and how do you process the signals, the, these body signals that are quite easy to interpret uh, in the physical world? It takes more efforts for the brain when you are online and there is many people in the same, uh, in the same screen. So it is good to have moments where you can focus just on your, on your work without uh, having meetings in order to allow your brain to, to rest because there is a lot of much more energy in, uh, in online meetings than in, in physical, uh, physical meetings. The other thing is that <coughs> the use of mindfulness, but let's put mindfulness in quotes because mindfulness is about just having reminders, reminders to a little bit take more control of your life, to, to, to put in your brain that the good things and the bad things, a moment of self-reflection, if you want, where you are waiting the positive things that happen in your life, where you are just living the present. And it's not about yoga, meditation. It is more about a moment where you're focusing on yourself and it can be quick moments of relaxation, eating exercises, everything that you want, just in order to focus on your body and remove every problem or out of work that, uh, that may compromise and may affect your level of stress. 
Elena, so that's uh, the three tips that I, uh, that I have for me. What about you? I'm pretty sure that you have some. Yeah, you know what I like about some of the things you mentioned? It's almost like being proactive, uh, being proactive with our, this sort of idea of taking care of ourselves. And I think that's very important. I recently read something about having that work health plan. So incorporating these different techniques that you mentioned into your day to day. And I think what's most important, and this is where the productivity comes in, is that to do it even when you don't feel like you need it. Right. And I think this is where we, we go wrong, because oftentimes we wait until we're stressed out to actually incorporate a, a, a mindfulness moment or we're waiting until we're feeling anxious to go for a walk. Why not in, instead just say, you know, however, even if my day is going great, let me incorporate it. You know, that mindfulness piece that, you know, uh, maybe taking a walk, maybe just having a conversation with somebody to make it more proactive. And I think another important part here is to learn how to let out the stress. So if you are having that stress, making sure to kind of let it out maybe have a conversation with somebody mm. you know maybe writing it down whatever works so you know in the regular times when we used to work in the office sometimes we'll interact with co-workers and we'll say you know what oh this you know I had this interaction it wasn't great so you kind of small pieces you kind of let out talk about your day do a little bit of venting nothing wrong with that right mm. that's kind of healthy and now that we're sort of you know just not as connected with our co-workers you know, and, and or even on Zoom, it's, it's just different than running into somebody at a water cooler or at a coffee machine or something. So, so I think finding that way to release the stress as well. And again, it could be having that conversation. It could be just going to the gym. And boxing for me has been doing wonders lately. So I, I'm, I'm really enjoying that. So just finding whatever works for you, essentially, a place to vent your stress. Just to end this discussion, so we say that there is nothing to celebrate. This is, uh, this is a moment, in fact, to take um, your destiny in hands, to reflect what are you going to do to improve the level of stress for you and for others. So what we would like to do, because this is not over, uh, is to offer you the possibility to practice how to manage the process process that will help you out manage your stress. So we are going to drop uh, a link below this video in order that you access for free the 10 days challenge, which is basically a process that you, where you create micro actions in order to reach this goal of liberating yourself from stress. Great. So don't forget to click on the link below this video.